That's crazy. Okay. Too crazy looking at booty. Nah. Certain things I'm about the only one that can do them. As I see how things are going, this is what I need to hear. Okay, now you're forced to look at each other as well as me. We, we get a chance to. Oh, no! I know, I know. We come to a class on oneness. Oh, no! Don't make me, don't make me actually look at anybody or connect with them. You know. So, uh, but thank you for coming. This uh, this kind of weather is usually teacher hail, so I want to thank you for bothering to show up. Would you mind cutting that light on behind you, brother? You just you just twirl it. Yeah, just there you go. Is that what you want? Yeah. I experience. I choose the feeling that I experience. I choose the feeling that I experience. I choose the feeling that I experience. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for it. I ask for it. I ask for it. Everything that seems to happen to you, you ask for it. Isn't that great to hear? Doesn't that just turn you on that everything that seems to happen to you, you ask for it and receive as you have asked? How, how, um, how many of you all have been asking for some pretty cool things? Anybody been asking for some cool things? So when you hear that, it doesn't mean that it only applies to stuff that you don't like. It applies to the things you do like. Find upon the goal that I would achieve. I decide upon the goal that I would achieve. I decide upon the goal that I would achieve. I decide upon the goal that I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for. Everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for it and, uh, yeah, now remember the guidelines to the course. You don't have to believe it, accept it, welcome it. Some of it's going to be hard to believe. Some of it's going to be quite startling. You are not asked to judge the ideas at all. If you use it, you'll see that it works. 
if you use it, you will see that it works. I say, if you use it, you will see that it works. I choose the feelings. Take a breath. Just take a breath. Everything that seems to happen to me, everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for it, I ask for it, I am responsible. Thank you, John Christmas, for helping me to remember that. If you ever want to download any of his music that's all based on The Course in Miracles, uh, just go to johnchristmas.com. It's free. And uh, he has these cool songs that are all based on the teachings from the Course in Miracles that uh, you would probably enjoy. I um, also want to thank everybody that's online, uh, checking it out on Facebook Live so that we can uh, get this done and that ain't no jive, which would be cool. Let me cut the sound off. Uh, if you don't know the person sitting next to you around you, would you mind just kind of like getting past the stranger stage with each other? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, today, test one, two. I'm having technical, technical illusions. Test one, two, one, two. Today, I'm going to be talking about the reward of teaching on page 334, chapter 16 the forgiveness of illusions, the forgiveness of false ideas, the forgiveness of fears. Uh, welcome to Facebook Live, folk. We're going to be on page 334 in the text, The Foundation for Inner Peace, Version of A Course in Miracles, uh, chapter 16, section 3, The Reward of Teaching. Chapter 16, before I, um, I always use a random number generator to determine what section I'm going to cover. I ask the Holy Spirit to tell me what whoever's going to be sent today, what it is they need to hear. And I've read the book over a hundred times, so it doesn't really matter for me where I'm at. I'm pretty much familiar with it. So, um, so today, uh, we're going to talk about the reward of teaching, which is R-O-T, rot. <laughs> We're going to talk about rot today. Okay, the reward of teaching. And to teach is to demonstrate. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Diana. Hello, Debbie, Myrna, and a lot of other people that's coming online. Nana, everybody. So the reward of teaching, the reward of teaching. I don't care how far we go, I want to hear what it's saying. Uh, if anybody was to practice one sentence that the Course in Miracles teaches consistently, they would get everything the Course in Miracles promises. So it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality, and it's about hearing it. Um, it says, we've already learned that everybody teaches and teaches all the time. Now say that again. Everybody's teaching and everybody's teaching all the time. You're teaching and you're teaching all the time. You're teaching all the time. The Course in Miracles says to teach is to demonstrate. So when I say you're teaching all the time, I don't mean you're formally standing in front of a group of people like I am. I'm saying you're teaching all the time because you're demonstrating all the time. So all day long you're demonstrating. You're demonstrating what? Either what's coming from love or what's coming from fear. You're only demonstrating what's coming from a sense of oneness or what's coming from a sense of being separate. So the, so the Course in Miracle says, you may have taught well. You may have demonstrated well, and yet you may not have learned, learned what? How to accept the comfort of your teaching. So you are demonstrating all the time, but you may not have learned how to accept the comfort of your teaching demonstration. You may think you're trying to teach love and the truth all day in one form or another, but he says we don't give ourselves the comfort of the thing that we're demonstrating, that we don't give ourselves ourselves. In other words, I'm teaching the course, but am I giving myself the comfort of what the course teaches? I'm teaching this to you, but am I giving Earl a break? Because sometimes what we do is we, we, teach, we learn this kind of stuff and we start to be much kinder to other people than ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, we are, we are back off of doing other people, projecting mm-hmm. on other people, but still blame ourselves or criticize ourselves or, or join, uh, mm-hmm. uh, judge ourselves. Mm-hmm. So the Course is saying you may have demonstrated, but have you learned how to accept the comfort of your learning have you mm-hmm. and your teaching? He says, it, if you will consider what you have taught. In other words, if you will consider the truth that you're trying to teach now, if you've been trying to teach anything from the Course, and how alien what you're trying to teach is to what you thought you knew. Like what you're saying you believe now could be so alien to what you used to believe that you will be compelled to realize that your teacher came from beyond your thought system. If we were to really accept how different what we're learning is from what the world taught us, we would realize that whatever is teaching us is obviously something that's outside of the way we think. So we're living and realizing truths that are coming from outside the world's thought system, outside of the ego's thought system, outside of the thought system of fear. And the Course says, therefore, since we are being taught by a spiritual power and presence that's beyond what we learn, then that part of us must be looking at what we have learned and is perceiving that what we've learned isn't true. So there's a so that's that's pretty easy. In other words, if I think that I'm responsible in a world that people think they're a victim, then obviously the way that I'm thinking is outside of the thought system that the world is using. So I can step back from it, like he was saying, and I can say that's not true. It's not true that I'm the victim of any of you. It's not true that any of you are determining how I'm feeling right now. It's not true. So I'm I'm learning from a way of thinking that is not that see that sees the way that we were taught isn't true. And the Course then tells us that means that you're thinking from a thought system that doesn't have anything in common with the way you used to believe and the way you used to think. Uh, For certainly what your teacher has taught you, your higher teacher has taught you, and what you have taught through your higher teacher have nothing in common with what you were Mm -hmm. thinking before uh, your teacher came. So let's say that another way, because you can always separate, uh, use love or fear. And I love to use love and fear because basically what the Course is finally teaching me is the difference between what love is and what, what fear is. So I, I used to, I, I, I thought I knew, but based on what the Course in Miracles has taught me, I didn't have the slightest idea about what love really is. I, I, I thought fear was love, and I was calling fear love. So the Course in Miracles is sense. So let's use the word love and see the difference in when you read this. Um, it says, therefore, love could look upon your way of thinking fairly and perceive it was untrue. Love must have done so from the basis of a very different thought system and one with nothing in common with yours. For certainly what love has taught and what you have taught through love have nothing to do with what you taught before love came. And the results have, have been to bring peace where there was pain and suffering has disappeared to be replaced by joy. So the Course in Miracles is saying to me that what love has taught me has nothing in common with what I thought when I was in fear. And the results of practicing more love in my life has been that it's brought me more pain where I used to go, I mean more love and peace where I used to go through pain. And my suffering has really disappeared to be replaced with joy. I, I'm just flat not suffering the way I used to. There's nothing about my life there's anything the way it was before I got into new thought in the Course in Miracles. And so it's absolutely right. When I started to want to act from a loving place, a truthful place, the place that this book is teaching me, where I used to go through pain, I don't go through pain anymore. I'm not in relationships that cause me pain. I'm not in, I don't know any people who are causing me pain. I don't have anybody attacking me in any way. There's nobody I'm consciously holding a grievance with that I think has done anything to me. And if it was a time you had ever told me that I could sit in front of you and say that, I would have said you were crazy as hell. (laughs) That that was totally impossible. And the only thing I did is I changed my mind. And I used this to teach me how to do it. So don't tell me it doesn't work. I know it works. I just have to be willing to use it. And so I always tell people, I hope you find the form of the truth that will make you do it. It may not be the Course in Miracles for you, but I hope and pray you'll finally discover something you'll use. Because the truth is going to keep coming to you in a million different forms until you decide to, to change your mind and do what? Have peace where there was pain and to see your suffering 
disappear to be replaced by joy. There's only one reason why you won't let that happen, and that would be according to the course, because there's a payoff that you're getting from the way that you're being, and you're not ready to give that payoff up yet. That's the only reason why you're still suffering. There is a payoff. There is a payoff. There is a payoff. But fortunately, if it's not real love, whatever that payoff is, it's going to eventually reveal itself as not being worth the effort that you're that you're utilizing to keep it going. So that's the good news. You will get to the point, whatever the payoff is, is if it's not giving you real joy, you'll let it go. That's good news. So what did the first paragraph tell us? Well, the first paragraph told us that you're teaching all the time, but you may not have let yourself receive the benefit of everything that you're teaching and talking about every day. And if you really were to stay conscious, you'd realize that whatever we're learning from the course must have came from another way of thinking that's completely different from the way that we've learned to think and that doesn't have anything in common with the way the world has taught us to think. And the other principle that it let us know was that if you really have used what you are learning, then it should have replaced your pain with joy if you are really using it. Then that's what will happen. Because I'm not special. It's not like, and it's not, and I'm, don't get me wrong, it's not even saying that I expect every day to be feeling perfect and fine and joyful every day. That's stupid. I'm not going to, because that's putting, that's putting the condition on why I can feel okay. Because immediately when I go, oh, this day went well because I got it the way I want it today, then that means I'm going to have some days that I call not well if it doesn't happen the way I want it to happen. So really, a happy person is a person who has enough consciousness and peace that they can give themselves peace when they think they're not feeling good, and they can give themselves peace when they think they're feeling good. They're not making their peace dependent on anything outside of themselves. So, so what I hope is the next time my ego comes with, up with a defense to make me think that I'm not loved, that I will realize that's just my ego trying to come up with something to make me think I'm not loved. And I won't make such a big deal out of it. And just go ahead and tell myself something from the new thought system that'll change my mind about what I'm feeling because all of my upset is coming from my thinking and not from the situation that I think is causing my upset. As a matter of fact, whatever you think is causing your upset is just a cover for the thing that's really causing your upset. So as soon as someone tells you what they're upset about, you, you know that's the thing they're using to hide what's really going on. That's If you got a money problem, that ain't your problem. Your problem is whatever you're using the money problem to cover up, you're looking at. If you're having a relationship problem, it's not the person. The relationship problem is a smoke screen you're using to keep from taking a look at what your real fear is. You follow me? That's Everything I'm saying, I'm not making it up. That's why I don't have to feel guilty about saying it, okay? Uh, it, I'm not the one that made this book up. But it is telling me that uh, we're not, he says, <laughs> I was covering that Thursday night. Holy Spirit said, y'all are not really seriously disturbed by your hostility and your getting mad and your desire to attack. He said, you don't like it, but it don't really disturb you. Y'all acting like it really bothers y'all, but it really don't. <laughs> I went, oh, that's deep. Then he said, what you need to do is you need to feel the full extent of your anger and upset and hatred and not try to repress it or suppress it. He says, because if you really let yourself know how insane you are, you wouldn't be willing to stay that way. No. <laughs> right. I thought that was so deep. He said, the reason why you don't get off it is that you don't let yourself fully feel the extent to which where you got the issue. You know what I'm talking about. Like some of y'all, we all know we've had the experience. We go, well, hell, that was, that was just too crazy for me last night. Even I got to try to change now. How about all, every one of you had one of those experiences where you went, oh, now that was just too far. I, now I just know, you, wait a minute, I'm behind the bush peeping through at the person's house. I know, I do, I know I'm going, I'm going too far now. See, I got to do something about that. But if I pretend I didn't have that jealousy and insecurity, I would never reach the limit yeah. where I would go. I'm not willing to continue this. So I, I want people around me to feel free to feel what they feel to the fullest extent that they can feel it. So they'll go, I've felt this enough. I'm ready for something new. And so the Course in Miracles is telling us that's how you get your peace changed to joy, not through suppression and pretending that you don't feel what you feel, it comes from actually fully admitting what you feel and feeling it as much as you can feel it until you don't want to feel it anymore. And then, and then it says that, you know, then all the stuff you say you're upset about, you're not really upset about. That's just the smoke screen and the stuff you feel comfortable. That's your programming. 
And what you're really upset about, what you're really afraid of, he says, what we're really afraid of is the love of God. What we're really afraid of is love. He kept saying, y'all are scared of love. You think you're not, you know, it's not fear you're scared of. You're used to that. It's not anger you're scared of. You're used to that. It's not complaining or worry or sickness. You, you've had a toothache many times. He says, it's not about any of that. That's the smoke screen to hide that what you're really afraid of is love. You're really afraid of God. You're really afraid of the truth. You're really afraid of like what we did today, reaching over to another person and saying, hello. He says, that's what we're really afraid of. We're afraid of each other. We're afraid of connecting. You know, you know, you know some people would rather die than stand up in front of a group of people and give a talk. Like what I'm doing right now. That's, they said that's right up there behind fear of death. Matter of fact, it's, they say it's, it's beyond, it's above fear of death. It's the fear of talking in front of a group of people. <laughs> really. You know, so it's joining, it's connecting, it's communicating. It's, it's me being in a relationship with somebody and being afraid to tell them, tell them what I'm really thinking, what I'm really feeling, what I did last night. If I thought it was something, I should be. It's, it's, it's joining. We do separation easily. It's easy for me to be mad that you get away from you, judge you. Yeah, that's, that's child's play. So the course is saying, y'all need to stop pretending that it's all this separation and fear. You're afraid, you're afraid of joining. You're afraid of God. He said, you're afraid of connecting. And uh, so now that gives a whole new meaning to that lesson in the workbook that says, <coughs> I've never upset for the reason I think. Mm -hmm. See, that's giving that a whole new meaning for me now. Because now every time I feel upset about something, I go, oh, no, no, buddy. This is the smoke screen. No, it doesn't have nothing to do with you trying to be a vegetarian and you want some barbecue. You know what I'm saying? Don't have nothing. To do. <laughs> that is not really what's making you unhappy right now. But I'm from Memphis. I love ribs. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not what's doing it. You know, you're just trying to hide the burning love you have for your creator and the love that your creator has for you. You're trying to hide the burning, burning, honk of honk of burning love. Okay. <laughs> that's what you're trying to hide. Okay, so, uh, so that's what the first paragraph is trying to get across to us, is that we are being taught by something that's outside of our thought system. And if we use it, the pain will be replaced with joy. Um, did any of that trigger any thoughts or comments from anybody about that before I go to the next paragraph, either online or in person here? Going once. <laughs> Going twice. Uh, I'm on page 334, chapter 16, The Forgiveness of Illusions, section 3, The Reward of Demonstrating, which is the reward of teaching. The reward of teaching. Okay. Observation. I, okay. I know for myself, um, uh, there's been a lot of times where you know, I'll, I'll get caught in the game of life. Or I, I, I hear you. Go ahead. Uh-oh, and then the guy walked out on me. <laughs> you know, just, God damn it, you heard me say, go ahead. Say what you said, Pat. Patrick and I are friends. I can say anything to Patrick. Don't freak out. Everybody online, don't freak out. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, but you know, it's what I'm finding um, that I'm really touched by the course reflecting back on something when it's something that's beyond me that dictated a certain behavior that I just went wow that was really cool mm -hmm. because when I try to go in there with a preconceived notion I'm in my head that's right and it doesn't work but there's been so many times that you know a miracle happens but I don't know what's happening until after the fact thank God mm -hmm. and Thank yeah. God, because he says that, that <laughs> self-selected really miracles cool. can be misguided. Mm -hmm. yeah. That the worst thing you can do is show up somewhere and you decide who you're going to help. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so you don't know how many people right now in therapy because of your help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your best interests. I don't know what's like when people tell me to pray for people. What I always pray for that for that person is God's will. Yeah. I don't know what it's. I don't know what it's to to your advantage for whatever you're asking me to pray for you to have. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. I don't, even if it's for health, when you think you're sick, mm -hmm. I do not know what your soul needs for its evolutionary development and awakening. You may need that car accident mm -hmm. for you to get off your butt and go. I'm going to change my mind about how I see things. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's best, you know, for anybody. Mm -hmm. I just ask for God's will. I hope you do the same for me. 
I, I think that's the loving thing to do yeah. is to put me in the hands of my creator yeah. and not who what we think is best. Because yeah. we can always come up with power, money, fame, and physical pleasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what the court said. That's what we're going to come up with. Give me some form of pleasure. Give me some money. Give me some specialness, you know, in some way. That's what we're going to come up with. Mm -hmm. Something for the body's comfort. Mm -hmm. Something to make the body feel better. It's what humans come up with every time. It's what's going to make them happy. And the court said, that's your ego desires. Yeah. I was just going to say that um, what it brought up for me is I have to remember how alien this thought system is. And by that, and attribute it to something that's outside of the human realm. So that means that also when I go back into my general thought system or the thought system of the world, you know, for me, it's about I have to turn to love, turn to something that's outside of this world, outside of this human experience, mm -hmm. in order to get back into a loving place. Because that thought system of connection, of loving, is going to be alien. And so it takes a while demonstrating and of teaching to get into that being the new rhythm of life. That's right. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you, Megan. That's exactly the way I see it, too. I'm glad to get to, I'm on some alien thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a little alien. You know, I want a little alien. Yeah. You know, most of the people I've dated have been aliens. <laughs> 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 Poor CJ. That's what they <laughs> CJ is an alien. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't you think for a second she's not an alien? I would be interested if she wasn't an alien. Uh, you know, I want alien people. I want people totally outside of this thought system. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, really, I, want to, I want to be around people that are unpredictable. Mm -hmm. That I don't already know everything that's going to happen before I even see them because they're so afraid to get outside of the way they've been programmed yeah. to be. Yeah. So there's so you don't they don't surprise you ever yeah. because they don't do anything what you're in the world to do. Then wonder why they're miserable. Yeah. They don't realize they're miserable because of the thought system that they're adhering to that they learned from the time they were children. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, which is I need to find somebody outside of me that's going to make me feel good. Yeah. Um, yes, let's see what we got. Uh, that's right. Okay. Oh, good. Let's go to the next paragraph then. Um, you may have taught freedom, but you haven't learned how to be free. <laughs> Show yourself by your fruits. What are your fruits? Your fruits are the experiences that you're having every single moment of the day. So you know what you've been putting out by what you perceive yourself as receiving. Okay. The course then says, for it is certain that you judge yourself according to what you're teaching and demonstrating. So everything I tell you, don't you think I judge myself by that? Of course I do. If I tell you that you should be taking responsibility for your experience, don't you know that I judge myself by whether or not I'm taking responsibility for what I'm experiencing? Because he says, you're going to judge yourself according to what you're teaching and according to what you're demonstrating. That's why I always advise people, don't keep reading all these books if you're not going to do nothing they say. Because if you keep reading all this stuff without applying it, it becomes another burden that you add to the other burdens that you have that make you feel bad. Because then it becomes, oh, I meant to do my course lesson, but I didn't. Oh, I was supposed to be taking more responsibility today, but I didn't. You see what I'm saying? So it just becomes something else your ego uses to say you're a slacker. So some people think that the way to make a, bake a cake is to keep collecting recipe books. <laughs> So they go from one book, and that's what truth students do a lot of times. They go from one teacher to one teacher to one class to another, and they think that all of this going around the different classes means they are becoming enlightened. Mm -hmm. And that's just like me saying, I want to bake a cake, but if I collect a lot of recipe books, sooner or later I'm going to have a cake sitting on the cab. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, unless you apply something that you're reading, it's just burden. Be better not to do it at all. Go to the movie. <laughs> you know, because you at least feel good about that. You at least yeah. stayed there to the end. You know what I'm saying? So you actually succeeded. You said you want to go to the movie and you win. See, that's no, that makes you feel good. But you, I want to do the course of miracles. Oh my God, I want to kill somebody just this morning. I feel like I'm failing <laughs> at being unconditionally loving. No, if you say I felt like killing someone this morning and you felt that to the full extent that you needed to feel that, you wouldn't kill nobody. The people on top of the building shooting people are the people who are in denial about their anger, not the ones who are acknowledging their anger truly. So a person that's mad all the time is pretending that they're happy and loving is scarier to me than someone that says, I'm really making myself feel upset right now and I want another way to look at it. You know, uh, the face of innocence that has the face that's PO'd is not the one I trust. The court says we're two-faced. We 
You got your mm -hmm. face that's all nice and face that's mad about something, mm -hmm. or got a grievance about mm -hmm. something, and then it's hiding it beneath the nice face. And then it says, we wouldn't kill anybody if they didn't mess with us. That's what we tell ourselves. You know, I wouldn't hurt you if you didn't do something to me first. So we do attack in self-defense. He says that's how we justify our desire to attack while still feeling like we're good people. So this book is merciless. So I'm glad. I'm glad. I love it. I love it. I know it's not for everybody, but it's for me. Anybody else in here is for? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then, then the Course in Miracles says, uh, for it's certain that you judge yourself where according to your teaching. And then when you read the Course, it explains itself. Uh, the, the ego's teaching produces immediate results. The teachings that come from fear produce immediate results. Your ego produces immediate results. In other words, why does it look like the stuff that I don't like happens faster than the stuff I think I would like? Well, the Course says, well, the ego's teaching produces immediate results because your ego's decisions are immediately accepted as your choice. If I tell myself people don't like me and I just accept that and I don't even question that, then I'm going to immediately give myself experiences where it looks like people don't like me. It's because we believe that the negative can happen quicker than we believe that the positive can happen. So he says that's why the negative happens immediately. Because we accept that you can't trust people. Or we accept that life is a struggle. Or we accept that we're separate from God or separate from love. He says, so the minute that you accept that premise, it's going to give you immediate results in terms of your perception and the way you experience things. So if you're a negative person, it's going to always look like negative stuff happens to you fast because you believe in that that's what's going to happen to you. <coughs> right? And then the Course in Miracles says, uh, this acceptance, and notice it says means, so, you know, we analyze the Course a lot, but it's telling you what it means all the time. So it says this acceptance, what acceptance? The acceptance of what your ego, your fear tells you. This acceptance means that you are willing to judge yourself accordingly. I'm willing to judge myself accordingly to, according to the idea I'm not enough or I'm guilty or I'm weak. He says, so that gives me immediate results. And then the Course says, cause and effect are very clear in the ego's thought system because all your learning has been directed toward establishing the relationship between cause and effect. So even in the fearful ego thought system, we believe in cause and effect. Mm -hmm. He says, we've learned to believe in cause and effect. But, he says, wouldn't you have faith in what you taught yourself? It, wouldn't you have faith <clears throat> in something you have so diligently taught yourself to believe in? If, if I have diligently taught myself to believe in what the world has taught me, of course I have faith in it. If I, if I, if I have diligently learned I'm a body and that I'm separate, and that I have guilt and sin mixed it up with a really cool person. He says, or that uh, I'm a victim and things that are, ha are happening outside of me, or that I don't have eternal life, or that God isn't real. Why wouldn't I have faith in something I'm continuing? Would you mind closing that door right behind you, brother? Sure. That, that uh, I have so diligently taught myself to believe in. So he says, we have faith. We're totally capable of lots of faith. We just, he says, we just have misplaced loyalty. Mm -hmm. That we actually have faith in what doesn't serve us. Uh -huh. So we can, we're definitely capable of having faith. He said, that's why you're so stubborn about what you believe. That's your proof that you can be loyal to something, even if it's hurting you. <laughs> even, even if I know the way I think is hurting me, I still have a hard time letting go of it in favor of what the Course is teaching. Oh, yeah. So he's saying, don't say you can't have faith, and don't say you can't have perseverance, and don't say you can't be determined. Look at how you stick to crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, oh, no, Jesus, give me a snake, a snake dude. <laughs> Jesus, I call him Jesus of the course. Jesus of the course, you know, that, that dude don't, don't mess around. He just tells it like it is. You know, don't tell me you don't have y'all don't have the capacity for faith. Look how fixed you are in what you believe and how you believe it and what you do. You definitely have the capacity to have faith. So, um, and then the, the, and, and this is just two paragraphs, y'all. And then it says, uh, I love this. He says, would you not have faith in what you have so diligently taught yourself to believe? We yet, yet remember, one of the words that are said more in the course than any other word. Remember, didn't say analyze. <laughs> it said, remember how much care you have exerted in choosing the witness to, witnesses to what? To what you believe. <clears throat> 
in, in avoiding those what witnesses which speak for the cause of truth. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, people avoid the truth mm -hmm. to get support in whatever their false idea and their illusion mm -hmm. is. He says, just think about how much care you exert in making sure that you get back up about whatever it is you think. How important it is for you to be validated in what you think. And then he said, but I love the, the course says, but you avoid, which is an interesting word. He says, you avoid those which speak for the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, don't nobody come to me that want to hear that they are a victim. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to call Earl Purdy. They're not going to come anywhere near me. None of my friends, my relatives. I don't even remember last time one of my relatives got in contact with me about a problem they had. <laughs> I really don't because they, they don't want to hear what I'm about to say mm -hmm. you know and I'm just, I go well, do you really want to hear what I want to tell you or do you want to hear what you want to hear mm -hmm. and they're going to always say I want you to tell me the truth oh good oh, <laughs> oh God, I'm going to tell you what I need to hear I'm going to tell you exactly what I need to hear you know why because I know you're not going to hear me I know you're going to hear you. You're going to hear your interpretation of what you think I'm saying. So I don't even look for you to understand or hear nothing I'm saying right now. But I know I'm going to hear it. So I'm going to answer you in terms of what I want to remember. And what I want to remember is I'm entitled to miracles. I am sustained by the love of God. That I am spirit. That I'm not alone. That my miracles can replace my grievances. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to say to them what I want to remember because they're only going to hear what they want to hear anyway. Don't forget that. People are never hearing you. I don't care how clear you're trying to make it. They only hear what they want to hear. They only interpret things according to the meanings they have given it. So just let so let go of that whole thing of, I'm going to make this perfectly clear to you. <laughs> because you can't. But what they do pick up, which is even more important, is the energy behind the words. What they're really picking up is whether you got love and peace behind your words or judgment and condemnation behind your words. That's what people pick up. And what's teaching you is what you're telling yourself while you're telling them what you're telling them. Because we usually have two lines of communication going. What I'm telling you and then what I'm telling myself about what I'm telling you. <laughs> and it's what I'm telling myself about what I'm telling you, that's what's teaching me. So if I say I like you, Shannon, but in my mind I'm saying I don't like you, then what I'm teaching myself is that I don't like you. So it's what I say behind. Or I can reverse it. I could be giving you some tough love and saying something very intense outwardly on the inside, just feeling nothing but love and compassion for you. And that's what I'm teaching myself. Because some people don't respond to gentleness and kindness. They don't even hear you until you exert yourself in some kind of a forceful way, which is not negative in and of itself if you have no malice behind it. <clears throat> you see what I mean? <clears throat> I can say anything to you, but if I'm not really trying to hurt you, that's not the energy you're going to pick up because we're all in telepathic communication with each other and all of us know what everybody here is thinking. <laughs> yeah, and I won't even use that straight line. I'm going to keep going. Okay. <laughs> this is too much temptation in that statement. <laughs> Oh, we haven't gotten innocent enough yet to hear all my thoughts. <laughs> I'll let you, that's for my advanced class. I you know, had the weekend retreats. That's going to be a whole different ball game. Now. <laughs> Can't wait to teach people who are not freaked out by cursing. Okay, now, because sometimes when you want to say something, it's... It, Damn brings it home. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that's where you feel, you know. And people who are destroyed by words, they have a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. yes. These spiritual giants who can't stand you saying anything that doesn't sound nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, my God. You know, you think you're enlightened and you can't, a word brings you to your knees? <laughs> No, it's just not. It's not. It's just not what you're doing. Proper company. Okay, so your happiness depends on everybody in the world not doing anything other than the way that makes you feel good. Now, is that what you're telling me? That all of your peace and joy is dependent on how everybody reacts from the outer. Can't you see that's a losing proposition, baby? <laughs> it would be better to work on not being bothered by whatever happens than to think you're going to control whatever happens so that you're not bothered.
And don't you know you'd be happy as heck right now if it wasn't for the fact that you've got a script that's not going on and happening the way you want to right now? Do you know that? That the interviewer are sitting up here, including myself, with less than joy, is because you got a script. And you got something you told yourself needs to be happening before you feel good. Do you know what life is going to do? It's going to keep on showing you that's not true. Until you go, okay, maybe I need to look at this differently. If life cooperated with your idea that something outside of you had to change in order for you to be happy, then it would further convince you that your happiness is outside of yourself and not under your control. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. So the more you the, the more you make your happiness dependent on some person or some situation, that's the more you're going to put that situation off from happening for you. Because the universe doesn't want to support your erroneous ideas about where your happiness comes from. So as much as you, so if you go, it's when I get that special relationship, it's when I meet that that person, or when I get that job, or when I get that money, when, or when I lose that weight, you know. Every time you say stuff like that, you're not asking for the support of God and the universe because that's you wanting them to support a lie that you're telling yourself. So you have to do those things by yourself. And that's why it looks like you're struggling. Because your, your approach to what you want sets it up where you have to get it on your own. Because the universe is not going to want to support you thinking your happiness depends on someone else's behaviors or actions. So every time you tell me, it's going to happen after I do this. I know that's not true. But I'm not going to tell you that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say, well, that's not going to work. Why should I? You find out. <laughs> and then you're not mad at me. <laughs> and then you won't be able to say my negative energy. Mm -hmm. See, that's what the people, well, you know, you were the one. I mean, you said, you know. No, no, it's not going to work. I know it's not going to work. And uh, you need to find out it's not going to work faster. Because the faster you find it out, the quicker you're going to stop doing it. So I'm not going to interfere with it. If anything, I'm going to see what I can do to help you try it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, okay, what can I do to support you in thinking that new car you're going to get is going to make you happy? Even though you know, you've never had an experience in your life where you ever got anything and it made you happy for any period of time. But okay, we'll pretend it's the car this time. We'll pretend it's the 10 pounds. You know, and you still want to consider to continue to deceive, but then... <clears throat> <clears throat> then I need to try to create a relationship with my source and that which does create what makes me happy. You know, so I got to change my mind about God. I got to change my mind about spirit. I got to stop thinking I'm by myself. I'm on my own. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. Nobody seen the trouble. <laughs> you know, this, I need to find a Negro spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> This is the happy I am, the happiest I ever am with y'all. <laughs> Back at you. Right, so one time I feel like I'm telling the truth completely. That I'm saying what I think and what I feel completely uncensored is when I'm talking the truth. Yes. The rest of it is the BS. Yes. You know, regular stuff that people talk, that's all the stuff that don't help nothing. Uh -huh. You know, but this stuff, this conversation, this is a conversation that uh -huh. heals. And people who are not ready for the truth, they avoid it. And one of the easiest ways to avoid it is to simply go unconscious. And don't let yourself hear it. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. Uh, you would be excited to hear what you thought was a real solution. I say it again. You would be excited to hear what you think is a real solution. Mm -hmm. If there's no enthusiasm about the truth, it's because you don't really believe it's mm -hmm. going to help anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're hanging off a ledge yeah. and they're trying to get you off the ledge, you're not going to take a nap. <laughs> you're not going to go, I'm hanging on the ledge and you got the way out. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be, okay, okay, how quick can you get that ladder to me? <laughs> you're going to be, hmm. That means you don't believe this does a darn thing for you. And you're innocent. You're totally innocent. Totally innocent. Totally innocent. I just want to tell the truth about my ego. I don't want to hide it anymore. Mm -hmm. And people don't like that because that reminds you, you're reminding them of what they're trying to pretend they don't feel. Mm -hmm. That's why you get angry in front of people, they get uncomfortable. They're angry too. But now you're making them aware that it's in them and they're trying to pretend it's not. That's why they're getting upset with you getting upset. Because mm -hmm. it reminds them that they're upset. Mm -hmm. Of course, the miracle says you go to a funeral. 
you're not mourning the person in the casket. It is making you think about when you're going to be laying there. I'm like, come on, Jesus. <laughs> and there's nobody at the funeral gazing at the body with more wonder than the person that's supposed to be dead. That's a trippy, too. And I'm going to see how many of y'all come to my funeral. Yeah. If you don't, I'm going to hunt you. <laughs> you're going to be in the bed when you're going to hear me. I am responsible. <laughs> <laughs> That's Earl. That's he hunting me. Yeah. I knew he'd do it when I was in the shower. <laughs> okay, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was inappropriate, wasn't it? Uh, Inappropriate. Um, people don't know how to laugh, not gonna listen to me no more. What a loss. What a loss. <laughs> okay, any thoughts about that paragraph? Which taught us that you may have taught freedom, but you might not have learned how to be free. You're gonna know by the fruits what you're really doing, that your ego stuff happens quicker than the spiritual stuff because you believe your ego, the fear more than you believe the truth and love. And then he says, why wouldn't you believe something you've made yourself believe and learn so diligently? And you need to stop avoiding the witnesses for truth. You need to stop avoiding the people that will lo really love you and give you the truth. And remember how much care you are using to discern between who's going to give you the truth and who's not. Mm -hmm. That's what the paragraph said. Mm -hmm. So any thoughts, any questions, any comments? Jason? It just reminded me once again how much more comfortable I am in my suffering and how much more faith I have in that mm -hmm. because I know that works. I have that I have that mm -hmm. recipe down. I mm -hmm. know that works and even though mm -hmm. I'm realizing how insane that is, it's still so ingrained it's hard mm -hmm. to go, no, love is the truth and I'm afraid of it. Would you not have faith in what you have so diligently taught yourself yeah. to believe? Exactly. And that's what yeah, I agree, brother. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. Anybody else? Terry. Just on the same path, like, um, we had a really cool course yesterday on this mastermind, this business, and not feeling creative in mine and wanting to get more into my creative stuff. And she's like, I was driving home and I heard really clearly, well, isn't it cool that you're just suffering over your suffering? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm suffering over my suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. And, I, and I'm dialed into that and I'm believing in that. Well, you can't stick around if you see that you're doing it. Yeah. That's the thing about it. The fact that you can look at it like that means you're not caught up in it. People who are caught up in something don't know they're caught up in it. Yeah. If you can step back and say, that's my ego, then your ego is no longer ruling you. Mm -hmm. That's nothing. I'll say that again. If you can walk up to me and say, my ego is really making me do it, then it's just you still deciding to do it. Yeah. <laughs> because you can't be aware of something and still control you. If you know the pattern and you know you're the one that's mm -hmm. doing it, you know, that's just good news. Anybody else? He, he says in the teacher's manual that the teacher should demonstrate. Mm -hmm. And moment by moment, I'm demonstrating fear or love, and that's it. That's it. That's as simple as it is. That's as simple as it is. And I'm so well trained up in the ego thought system of fear that I'm afraid of love. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and so I avoid the people who love me, mm. and then I, you know, uh, like 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 this, the, the holy relationship that I'm experiencing right now with CJ. Mm. Okay, it's a challenge for me because I'm only receiving unconditional love. Mm -hmm. So it brings up everything in me that thinks I don't deserve it, mm -hmm. everything that in me that, that thinks I should uh, re re recoil from mm -hmm. it. Uh, makes me come think of all the ways and all the times someone has ever told me they love me or they had any kind of unconditional love for me and how that didn't turn out to be true in some way. Mm -hmm. Every feeling and emotion inside of me that is afraid of love comes up. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, because I need my problems to keep me from taking a look at that because as long as I didn't have that, I could pretend that I wasn't afraid of it. Mm -hmm. wow. See what I mean? Yeah. As long as there was no one accepting me completely, then I could always go, well, I would be this ultimate person of intimacy <laughs> if I had someone in my life that was let, was loving me the way I am. And then the universe goes, oh, really? Oh, that's true. Okay, <laughs> well, okay. 
you've been asking me to take over, so I'm going to give you love in spite of yourself. How about that? Uh -huh. Now I'm overruling you. You asked me to be in charge of your life. And you asked me to go beyond your fears. You asked me to go beyond. Okay. Wow. So, and, and, uh, so can you, can you admit to yourself that you, can, can you make sure you don't choose for the witnesses any longer in the form of women or men in your life that witness mm. back to you, Earl, that you are not lovable and you can't, uh, that, and, 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 and use them to witness that you can't be accepted for who you are. Wow. Are you ready to let go of the people who witness to your, that you can't be loved and are you willing to start and let the people come in that can love you as you are? And the Course says, um, and that and that love, by the way, is not a special love that excludes anybody in this room. That's one of the reasons why I've resisted getting in any kind of relationship with anybody is because I can never love one person. Because mm -hmm. at the point that it's only one person, it's no longer when I believe it's love. Because I believe in the thought system outside of the one I learned from the world. So in all-inclusive love doesn't mean all-inclusive sex. So we hopelessly confuse love and sex. So the minute you said love everybody, people want to project you talking about having sex with everybody. I don't want to have sex with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I covered that in the 80s. <laughs> I had sex with everybody. Yeah, I, with y'all too. <laughs> Were you alive in the 80s? Then I had to. <laughs> I'm just so enlightened that I made you forget. <laughs> you don't even know what happened. Okay. Which is what most people say. Okay, so. <laughs> did it happen? Yes! It happened. You loved it. Okay, you loved it. <laughs> that's four minutes ever. <laughs> hey! Hey! Whoa! Whoa! It really was. <laughs> it's about quality. It yeah, nothing to do with country. quantity. <laughs> All right, I lost a hundred and oh, viewers. <laughs> see the numbers going down. <laughs> All right, Shannon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anybody? Yes. So I moved out here. I just celebrated my one year anniversary. So my mom passed away uh, a week before I moved here, and, and the whole family dynamics of Atlanta and the energy and the oppression and the heaviness and the just yucky, yucky stuff and all the miracles that have happened mm -hmm. since I've been <sighs> set free. A year ago, and I'm just celebrating in the joy of that. Well, my mom's, you know, will the whole thing with families and money and how communication is cut off because of money. And I've had to beg my brother, who's the executor of this, the estate, every single month since I've been here for my money. Mm. And it's like now my brother has procrastinated so long that my brother in law won't send me any money until he finishes the estate. It, it, it's just all bullshit. So okay. Okay. anyway. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. So I needed <laughs> I needed some money because of, you know, my situation. Mm -hmm. And I had to react in anger, which made me feel really bad. Mm -hmm. And it's the only language they understand. Mm -hmm. It's the only mm -hmm. language they understand. So we I, I did it through text. And, and her response to me was, I guess we have become one of those families, which is a shame. But frankly, maybe we've been that family for a long time, mm -hmm. judging each other and not thinking about anything past that you have judged us as much as we've judged you. I'm like, that was really mm -hmm. well said. <laughs> it really was. Wow. And so yeah. I own that part of me. Mm -hmm. but. I own my, my mm. shit. Okay. And that's the only language they understand. So even if I, uh, there was no more communication between us, I was okay with that because they're, they're, they're holding on to something 
like money mm -hmm. with, because of the choices that I've made mm -hmm. since I moved out here, mm -hmm. which is none of their business. Mm -hmm. And that's what I said. Mm -hmm. So thank you. This is perfect. Yeah. I'm never upset for the reason I think. Yeah. You know, whatever it is that I think the upset is about, what is it really about? You're learning how to let go of your fear of love. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing you want to do. It's like after you get through saying what you think it is, then go to the real deal. Yeah. That way you are not in denial. I think I'm angry and upset about what my kid did yesterday. And let me tell you exactly what I think my kid mm -hmm. did yesterday. And let's talk about even what I said to them and they said to me. But the truth is, yeah. Yeah. this is covering up my fear of God. This is covering up my fear of love. This is mm -hmm. covering up my fear. Mm -hmm. The truth is, our problem <clears throat> is that we are afraid to join. Yeah. Yeah. Me and my family are afraid to join. You, that's what's, And that's all you have to do to mm -hmm. unlock the block is tell yourself the truth. True. See, and that ego says, no, it's about convincing your family and changing their mind. No, that's the slow way. You, yeah. you don't want to deal ego to ego. Mm -hmm. You know, just be responsible for your peace and take responsibility for what you're feeling in the situation. Mm -hmm. Then watch the Holy Spirit work a miracle mm -hmm. in that situation for you. And never believe it's a loss that people that are nothing but hell to be around anyway choose not to be around you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the first sign of sanity is you stop missing people who mistreat you. Yeah. Or you stop missing people who all you have is conflict with, and you're not chasing after them to try to get them yeah. to change their mind about you. They, mm -hmm. The truth is with them, too. God is with them, too. You're not so special that the voice for God mm -hmm. only speaks to you. Yeah. But it's smart enough to know when it can talk to them, and you need to be smart enough to know when you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. you, may, you need to be smart enough to know when silence is the best way to deal with something yeah. or somebody, too. You know, I'm telling you, 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 you start to practice this stuff, and you will start to see miracles happen because <clears throat> you're not the one that's the healer and you're not the one that's going to heal the situation. You're practicing what it says. is that It's just a symbolic gesture that you are expressing to show you have a willingness for God to take over. And what our ego tells us is that we, I'm come to the class, he's going to say something to me that I'm, I'm going to be able to walk out that door and heal all these situations in my life. You aren't the healer. God is the healer. Spirit is the healer. It's not about you healing anything. As a matter of fact, it's not healed because you're trying to heal it. It's not healed because you're the one that's trying to be in charge of the whole process, which is frightening to our ego, which wants to be in charge of everything. Yeah. So if I'm not going to be in charge of it, then I need to learn how to live where I'm not in charge of it. That's not going to just come because I just make it up. I need to learn how to get out of the way. I need to learn how to listen to the voice of God. And it ain't going to happen without attention and study. I'm sorry. It ain't going to happen without some focus. Mm -hmm. So you can think you're going to walk around all the time and never allow yourself to be taught in order to change. Mm -hmm. But that's slow. That's slow. That's the slow way. You know what I'm saying? I'd much rather go to somebody who knows how transmissions operate since I know nothing about them <laughs> to get my car working. If I had to learn everything and know everything before I could get anything done, I wouldn't get nothing done. <laughs> I don't know how to make vacuum clean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So every time you make it up where you've got to be the one that does it all on your own, and that's a, com that's a completely egotistical perspective. That is a, a perspective that is opposite to the, to the new thought system as you can possibly have. But the Course in Miracles says adults are taught that it's all about being autonomous and self-sufficient, and if you don't do it on your own, something's missing in you, mm -hmm. that you're weak in some way. Mm -hmm. And it even said... In one of the books, I think The Course of Love, he says, we don't even want answers that would work for us that we didn't think of. Mm -hmm. So I could be helped, but I don't even want the help it unless I'm the one that can say I'm the one that thought of it. And I'm the one that did it. He says, that's how egotistical the ego mind is. Even if it could be helped, if it's not its idea, it doesn't want to even let it in. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I'm letting go of that part of myself. That's, that's what I meant when I said earlier. I don't want to be in any relationships that would exclude you and exclude my love for you and my ability to communicate with you. But what I watch happen when people think you're in a relationship is they back off. They start to project all of the rules that they have on you. And in many cases, I have friends who don't extend to me as much now because they think I'm somehow now <clears throat> off limits because I'm in a relationship. So I know there's a person that have, doesn't know me and hasn't heard a thing I've said in all the years they've been around me. Mm -hmm. So then that, that immediately weeds out who are my friends who know me and who are the ones that don't. Mm -hmm. But I also know that people are, treat, are wanting to treat you the way they like to be treated in the same situation. See, if they was in a situation like that, they wouldn't want 
whoever they were in a relationship with to extend in any way to anybody else. Mm -hmm. So that's what they do to you. Like he says, you demonstrate, you teach, and you teach all the time. Mm -hmm. So then they demonstrate to me how they would like relationships to be, mm -hmm. which is limited and exclusive. Mm -hmm. That's all. So nobody's a secret to anybody the once you start to wake up. The once you start to practice this stuff and read, you don't have to worry about where people around you are coming from because you know they're demonstrating it and demonstrating it all the time. So all you have to do is sit back a minute and watch, and you'll know who can really roll with you the way you are and who wouldn't. Because anybody that knows me would know that they didn't have to be any different with me than they've ever been with me in any way they've ever been with me. Because I'd never be in a relationship where I was limited in any way because I don't believe limitation is love. Because the Course taught me it's not. But I happen to wake up to that fact in a world that's based on the idea that limitation is love. So then I become the scariest person around <clears throat> to someone who's afraid. But the good thing about fearful people is fearful people separate. Yeah. So that's what you, you don't have to worry about that. Fearful people are going to always separate. So you don't have to put anybody out of your life when you start to practice love and truth. They'll be rushing in like a stampede to get away <laughs> from you. <laughs> you know? But then there'll be these other people who are rushing and stampeding towards yes, you. Yes. And they'll be so refreshing to be around. Mm -hmm. They let you be. They don't judge you. They take responsibility. They believe mm -hmm. you're supposed to be happy. They, they preach out. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So, and so you get a chance to compare what it's like to be around people who are terrified mm -hmm. and vicious, broken in two by periods when they act nice mm -hmm. because you kind of acted like they want you to, mm -hmm. and then being around people who take 100% responsibility for their experience, yeah. which means that they don't want to project and blame you for anything, and the last thing they want to do is limit love. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's the last thing. And then, they, and then you know that love comes in many, the way you express love is in many forms, so you can have love everybody but express it in different ways. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly not going to express love to my kid the way I'd express it to my partner in every way. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because that's just form. Mm -hmm. What matters is content. Mm -hmm. The content should be love. The con and then the world taught me that love was specialness, which meant love was fear. So the person that I had the most fear around was the person I thought I was most in love with. Mm -hmm. So that would be the person that would trigger all of my fear, all of my, like he said, would make me avoid the truth and choose for the witnesses to fear. So be honest with yourself. Give yourself whatever boundaries and agreements and limits you need in your relationship, but make sure those boundaries and agreements are true for you and it's, and that's, and it's coming from you authentically and not because society tells you that's, that's what you should do. So I, when I teach, I always put out a special cause called to people who have alternative lifestyles and unconventional attitudes toward relationships and sexuality. Mm -hmm. I want you people to know there's somebody that sees your innocence. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. everybody that does it straight got a thousand quadrillion teachers that, <laughs> that backs that up. I'm, I want everybody to know they're innocent. Whether you're the most traditional person or you got a thing going for monkeys. It doesn't make any <laughs> <laughs> Tarzan and Cheetah were too close for me. I had a thing about Cheetah. I was like, wait a minute. I swear I'm not happy. I'm high on life. I'm high on love. We don't, the Course of Miracles says we don't laugh enough. Yes. We take everything too doggone serious. As if you're not going to make it whether you do anything or not. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay anyway. You know what I mean? You, you're going to be okay anyway, in spite of what you're telling yourself, in spite of what you think. Unconditional love loves you. So if you create a relationship where your only commitment in the relationship is to see each other as innocent and sinless and guiltless and to remind each other of that, that's a holy relationship. It has nothing to do with whether you're monogamous or polyamorous or open or cold, whatever you want to call those things have nothing to do with love. Of course, the miracles are saying God's son is guiltless and sin doesn't exist. That what you're in a relationship with is to help each other remember the truth about your deserving only unconditional love and safety and peace. That's why it's the truth about yourselves. So if you hear me say I'm in a relationship, I want to assure you that's the goal of that relationship. Yeah. My goal in being in a relationship is not for most. I'm not in a relationship with somebody for security. I'm not in a relationship I won't grow old by myself. I love being by myself. 
If I choose to get in a relationship, it's because it's something I want to learn. Mm -hmm. I want to check out some, what's going on in the world. I don't have a need to have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or anything like that. But would I, because I'm whole and complete. Mm -hmm. You know? And I like doing what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it, without having to get anybody's permission to do it. Oh, that sounds so cool to me. <laughs> I love that. That feels so good to me. And if I want to see what it's like to see if I could be myself with somebody, to explore that, that's also exciting to me, too, because I can always choose out of it, and they can, too. Or we can always choose, like, you know, like, uh, we can always choose to go, what form of our relationship would be most peaceful for us right now? So what is it we need to stop doing that we are doing, and what is it we need to do that maybe we haven't been doing? So that's, a, a, and that's the way I do my relationships. It's like the relationship is more important than the form of it. For most people, it's the form that's important. You just got to be my girlfriend. The minute you're not my girlfriend, we don't have a relationship. We can't even see each other anymore. You better not have lunch with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way we do it, right? Yeah. You know, like we act as a big deal. Well, he had lunch with his ex. That meant they might have really actually cared about each other. Yeah. How can you be totally in love with me and say you don't ever want to see me again, ever? Mm, Even yeah. if I'm sane again. Now, I can understand if I'm still crazy. <laughs> but, you know, that makes sense. Stay away. But if I've really changed then you should be willing to forgive me and I should be willing to forgive myself and forgive you. You know, so I want to be with people who don't want to just read this stuff and go out the door and act as crazy as they always have. I want to read this stuff and be with friends and lovers and connections that say, let's live this together, Raj. Let's see if we can. It's going to be edgy and our egos are going to come up sometime because we know we learn. But I'm ready to go to another level of love, too. That's what I'm asking the universe for. I'm tired of just talking. And watching everybody still act the way they always do, including me. I want to be, I'm asking the universe for edgy people who are saying, I'm ready to live this now. And I know I have an ego. And I know you have one. So we're going, sometimes it's going to come up. But we really want to live this instead of just talking it. I'm going to be your mate. And I really am not going to blame you for what I'm going through right now. The next time I think you did something, I'm not going to attack you for that. That's living it. But to sit here and hear this and then leave here and go home and go, if you just got a job, <laughs> <laughs> then everything will be solved in our relationship. As soon as somebody got you, you yeah. know they're in their ego. As soon as they go you, yeah. you know, a conscious being is going I. Right. Conscious beings are going we. Right. We are creating this relationship. We are creating this situation we're going through. We created the marriage that we had that ended in divorce. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, 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 I'm experiencing breakthrough. Like I'm having a breakthrough with my ex-wife from years ago that we had misperceptions of each other without me doing anything but practicing the course. It had nothing to do with me calling her up and talking to her. I'm watching things heal just because I'm practicing what it's saying. And I'm only sharing this with you because witnesses help. Yeah. To be reading this and not ever be in front of somebody that's saying this working isn't helping. But I'm not coming from a position of I still don't have an ego. Mm -hmm. Because then I can't enjoy my life. <laughs> I, my ego is just still trying to help me survive. It's just doing it in a crazy way. It's the part of me that thinks making me feel guilty makes me a good person. Or me being punished. Absorbs me from guilt. Your, your ego still thinks it's looking out for you. It just does it in a way that has to do with punishment and pain to do it. Because our society teaches us that punishment is correction. Mm -hmm. That's how we grew up. We grew up in a society that goes, you robbed the bank, and we put you in jail for 20 years without any rehabilitation, working on your mind whatsoever, put you back out in society. By the way, you can't get a job anywhere, and you're supposed to be a much more loving person regardless of what might have happened to you even while you were in jail. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of society we live in. And that's coming from my own guilt. That's coming from my own sense of separation from God. That's coming from my own trying to hide the fact that I'm afraid of love. So all your problems that's not your problems are the fear of love. The Course in Miracles says what we're trying to do is deny our burning love for our creator and our creator's burning love for us. That's what we're afraid of. Complete and total love. And I warn you if you get sincere about it, you're going to start attracting people in your life that's going to want to practice that with you. And that's when you'll get in touch with you, where you feel really about intimacy. That's when you'll get in touch with whether or not you're still capable of jealousy or insecurity. And so you want to be with somebody that is actually excited to see you express yourself in that way. 
because you're using your relationship to take all your feelings to the fullest extent mm. so that you won't have that feeling anymore. Mm. So you'll get over jealousy if you do it with a person who you could feel as jealous as you could possibly feel and they don't attack you for that. Mm. And they know you're just taking it to the fullest extent so you'll no longer want to be that way again. Mm. And you'll get over it faster because you only felt jealous because you were afraid of loss and they're showing you you can't lose. Mm -hmm. Poof, end of it. So it's not getting with the person that never gets jealous or never gets insecure. It's about being able to be with a person that can go through that mm -hmm. and you never forget who they really are because y'all have a commitment to seeing each other's innocence. And you have to talk to that person. You don't expect that to happen because you have just decided that's going to happen. I'm going to have a holy relationship, but I'm not, my partner does not have to cooperate. My partner doesn't have to join me on that. That's crazy. That's totally insane, but I see people do it all the time. Well, if it's just me, then if I just do it by myself, without the other person, that, well, you can do it, but that ain't going to be much fun. You can, you can put, if you're that enlightened, you shouldn't even be with the person that you're not getting along with. Your mind should have been so aware that that person would have been the most loving person in the world. So if you got that level, that you can assume 100% responsibility by yourself for every bit of peace that happens in a relationship, you're already an avatar. <laughs> but I see people do that all the time. I'm going to join in a relationship with, no, with somebody that doesn't share my goals or purposes at all at any level of acceptance and because they're cute. And uh, somehow or another, we're going to have this unbelievably positive, beautiful, wonderful relationship with each other. Where if I even mention that having the truth, the peace, of sanity, that they really cue me, I think I'm crazy. I want to know what is it about a person like that that's so appealing. <laughs> I want you to tell me what makes that person somebody you really want to be with so bad when all, when all they do is go the opposite to everything that you value and even criticize and judge you for it. Is the sex that good? Is the, is the way they look that good? Is it, is it a house? Is it a car? What, is, what are they doing? So punishment. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious when I say that. What is it about this person that is so, well, they're rejecting me. They are witnessing back to me what I believe about myself, which is that I'm not worthy. Or even better than that, I'm afraid of love and they can justify me never opening up. Because now, how can I look at what they're like? So it just becomes an a easy way for you not to have to practice the truth for yourself. For yourself. Yeah. And that's why I'm hanging out with them. Because then I can keep on saying I want all this love that's not showing up. Mm -hmm. But the, the truth is I'm afraid. I'm afraid of joining. Mm -hmm. You know. Because so if I was feeling jealous, what I'd do is walk up to the person that I was in a relationship with and say to them, I am feeling, I'm making myself feel so jealous right now. <laughs> I'm making myself feel so jealous right now. And don't you stop doing what you're doing. That's how I would end it. Don't you dare change your behavior mm -hmm. because I want to go beyond this. Mm -hmm. And I know I'll never go beyond it with the person who's never bringing it up. Yeah. I'll just bear it, pretend I don't have it, and still be stuck with it. Mm -hmm. A piano doesn't make a sound until you press the key. <laughs> so the piano could look like it's not capable of even expressing music. Mm -hmm. That's you. You can be full of jealousy, fear, insecurity, or cool things. And avoid the people who would ever trigger you and make yourself think you are more healed and more loving than you actually are. Mm -hmm. The person that's the gift is the one who absolutely triggers everything in you, but you love each other and you want to acknowledge it, feel it, and teach each other that it can't interrupt your love. Mm -hmm. I'm glad one person heard it. <laughs> they should be making all of us feel good, right? Why is that alarming? Why is that not something we would jump up and down like we would if the Broncos had just got another freaking Super Bowl win? Because there's a part of us that's afraid of love. Yeah. Yeah. It's a part of us that's afraid of losing. That's so insecure that the, even the slightest thought of a person caring about somebody else other than you sends chills down your spine. So don't be surprised if you attract a person who feels the same way. And they're going to also be jealous and insecure and don't know how to love either because you don't. So then you go, I'm going to use my relationship with you to learn how to love. I'm going to use my f friendship with you to learn how to love. I want to be the person you can tell me that you have all these fears, even if they're about me. And then I can tell you that that's okay. Thank you. I want you to share because that's how you would know our relationship is real. Because you can say the thing to me that makes you think you're going to lose me, and I show you you can't. End of your fear.
Because that's all it was anyway, mm-hmm. fear of loss. Yeah. But if you're with somebody who don't feel that way or who don't want to choose that goal or <clears> who are not sincere about it, they're going to let you down every time. But they're still doing what you want them to do mm-hmm. because then they become the justification for staying afraid of joining. Mm-hmm. Woo! Mm-hmm. 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 Let's acknowledge ourselves for here at the Black Man Ranch. Another, another episode of the Black Man Ranch. You know, this is really cool. Cool. Those of you online, and you you all are making some incredible comments that I, I want you to know. I love how you've been talking to each other and coming with each other. Let's do the financial expression of appreciation. Those of you online, thank you for sharing a financial expression of appreciation to me and with me. Go to earlperdy.com. Let me pass this around. Earlperdy.com, or you just go to paypal.me forward slash earlperdy. That's the other name, PayPal, paypal.me forward slash Earl Purdy. Thank you for sharing with me. I'm a full-time teacher in the world, and I'm glad and I appreciate you seeing value in what I do. Uh, I'm also available for one-on-one sessions called Clarity Sessions. Go to my website. It explains them in detail where I work with you on a one-on-one. And hopefully you'll also let me, let me uh, share with you my astrology and numerology knowledge because they can also help you Know what your lessons are, the easiest ways to get past the block, why you landed on the planet in the first place, and what you're trying to do. We weren't just dropped here in earth school without some idea of what it is we're supposed to be accomplishing. God isn't that cruel. That which created us isn't like us. <laughs> okay? It, it really loves unconditionally. It gives us guidance. We're in a culture that denigrates any type of intuitive psychic awareness, which is a shame. You know, there are many ways to get knowledge other than just your rational reasoning, reasoning mind. That's important. Don't get me wrong. That's an important. But that's not the only way that we can get information at all. That's cool. So, um, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Mountain Time, I do the Way of Mastery on Facebook Live. And uh, Thursdays, we do Hardcore Course in Miracles, which is primarily geared toward people who are studying the course know that they want, they love the course, and want to get deeper into the course. It's not so much a class for convincing people who are not sure it's what they want to do. It's more a class for people who already know it's what they want to do, and they want to do it with somebody that really wants to do it. And they're willing to go through the challenges and the ego resistance to hearing some hardcore stuff. So that's Thursday nights, and then of course our one o'clock on Sunday class. Uh, And so you go to the Earl Purdy page on Facebook, and so you can watch the Facebook Live without being a member of Facebook. I, keep, I, I want you all to know that. You don't have to be a member of Facebook to watch things that are on pages on Facebook. So you just go to Facebook.com, 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 forward slash Earl Purdy Live. That's how you tune into the online uh, Course in Miracles and Way of Mastery classes. So I'm, so I'm putting a call out to the universe for you, to you and everybody else that wants to get deeper into the application of this and not just talking about it, but they're really ready to go to the next step. And those are people who have reached their limit. And anybody's coming for a while, they know I say that all the time. Nobody changes until they reach their limit and everybody has a different limit. So there's some people that can suffer for years and 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 years before they go, I've had enough. And there's some people that they can't stand pain. They don't have a... The Course in Miracles says that when you start to wake up spiritually, you don't become more patient with your pain and upset. You become less patient. So so being spiritual doesn't mean you handle crappy situations better longer. It says becoming spiritual awakened means you go, I don't have any patience with this relationship of abuse anymore. I don't have any patience with not being seen, treated with love and kindness. And you, you, in other words, you don't want to stick in it longer. You find that you get irritated even faster because you know you deserve more light yeah, yeah. and more love. Thank you. Don't rather send me so many hearts. Oh, oh. <laughs> we found you. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. The moral of the story is my brother-in-law sent me a check. I was happy, and I invited my sister to come out for my grandson's one-year anniversary, uh, anniversary birthday yesterday. <laughs> Beautiful. For the weekend. Beautiful. And she couldn't come, but you know what? Our relationship is healed. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You changed your mind, changed my perception. I acknowledge you for that. 
-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So go to my website and sign up at my contact list. Um, I know I've been talking about workshops for a while, but I said I wasn't going to do it until the inspiration and the downloads mm -hmm. came, and they, and they have. So I know that now it's time for me to go ahead and get that together and to allow it to happen and to do it. So I'm excited. I'm excited to have y'all for several hours of torture. Oh, that, uh, yes. I'm going to torture you with love. I'm going to torture you with acceptance. I'm going to torture you with you being able to be yourself. <laughs> y'all ready for that? Yes. Okay. I love you. Thanks for coming out, Holy Spirit. And hugs out, brother. Thank you online, brothers and sisters. Uh, some beautiful people in here, and if you don't have to run, just say hello to somebody or bye to somebody. <laughs>